pleased to be with, with Coach Brooks Miller after a 17-8 and eight season, 10-4 and four in the conference, heading into the MIAA tournament. Coach, how are you? Good, good. Andy, thanks for having me. Well, undefeated last year in the, in the conference. This year you get four conference losses. What did you learn from this season and, and facing some adversity like that? Well, first and foremost, how about uh, got to you got to congratulate the women on the job they did oh, this year. Sure. Tremendous, tremendous job, uh, especially what they did in the second half of the conference season. Really proud of them and and their support with us all year. Uh, but you know, I think it's just it's two different years. It's two different teams. You know, they moved the three point line back about eight inches, and and uh, you know, losing a guy that's a experienced ball handler like Reese McGinsey who made open shots and is always in the right spot and was a leader in his own right. It's just a different team and I think we had some guys get better um, and we added some new talented young players to the mix so we had to really uh, find the right combination against certain teams and you got to give Calvin a lot of credit they had two all-conference players last year but added a first team all-conference player and uh, they, they were really improved so the conference uh, one through four was extremely challenging and then four through seven uh, every game was a different type of challenge for us to try to meet defensively and offensively and we had to find the right pieces each and every night to uh, to really kind of make it work so and we're still doing that we're still getting better I think uh, you know we knew down the stretch we had to play our best basketball and I I think um, you know we, we've lost one game here in the last uh, in the last round. So we're playing as well as we've played all year long, and we're excited about the challenge tomorrow night against a really tough uh, young Adrian team. I can't remember what's the most threes that you hit in a college game, Brooks. I was trying to remember that. Maybe one, <laughs> not not many. That was definitely. Did you ever get eleven in one game? I never did get to eleven. That's, okay, that's so because sure. your guy Bryce hit eleven the other day against Kalamazoo, and that tied the Trine record. Um, he's been shooting the ball so well with so much confidence and uh, we had him on a couple weeks ago and again he wants to deflect all the credit to his teammates and to the coaches he doesn't want to take any credit for himself but I've been impressed with Bryce Williams this year he has really stepped up he's a shot maker now and we need guys to make shots outside just talk about his sort of evolution this year as a player well, his role has never hasn't changed for us since he's been here at the mm -hmm. offensive end of the floor. It was to stretch defenses and really, really lock into being a great shooter, uh, which he has become. Um, uh, you know, we talk about uh, Nick Bowman's time and some of our other players that we've had here in the gym to get better. Um, none of them have matched or have outlasted him when it comes to hours and shots up. Um, but, you know, Bryce's impact has become at the defensive end of the floor, uh, especially mm -hmm. on Saturday against Adrian. I thought he played a tremendous defensive game, and he's kind of letting that build into the offense. Think about that first, making shots second. But uh, his teammates have done a really good job of getting the ball inside out, getting him some looks mm -hmm. uh, with the ball coming directly from the rim to step in and shoot the ball. He's not taking as many lateral pass threes, which makes a difference. So there's a lot of different things he's been doing, but uh, the work he's put in throughout his career uh, here at Trine and even leading up to this in high school and when he was a young boy, I, I've known him since he was about seven or eight years old. So uh, it's always been important to him and I've just been really blessed to have him in my life and a part of our program, but our university, just to have him here and what his sister and him have brought to the culture of our athletic department has been really remarkable. You know, with Manny Magnanglo and uh, Brett Cox up front, sometimes you could forget about a guy like Mitch Geller, but you look down and kid averaged 10 points a game in conference this year. And, and I liked his his just chip on his shoulder that he played with this year. I, I was really impressed with Geller all season long. I think he's going to be a factor in the playoffs as well. Talk about, about Geller finishing strong in his senior year too. Well, the timeliness of his success has been really important to us. He had a huge game against Hope here at home, mm -hmm. uh, Albion on the road. You know, three of our best players are really the same position with mm -hmm. Emmanuel, Brent, and, and Mitch. So uh, being able to try to find the right combination for those guys to be successful, whether it's Mitch and Brent together or Brent and E separate, uh, but I think you know Mitch is one of those guys that really improved in the offseason and really worked hard to become a better player at the offensive end of the floor. So uh, really, he played like an all-conference player this year at times, and, and we're definitely going to need him down the stretch with his rebounding. Uh, he's a great communicator. He's a really bright young man, uh, but I think you know when you shoot anywhere between 55 to 60 percent from the field, that's significant with how we play and the thing that uh, you know we really utilize with Mitch the most. You started the season on the perfect tone with the Play Like 11, uh, the Reese McGinsey day, day where everybody had the t-shirts and celebrating that kid. I've been blown away by that guy this year. Just his enthusiasm on the bench. You wouldn't know that he wasn't playing if you just watched <laughs> him on the bench. Um, the love that he has for his teammates, the understanding of the game that he brings, um, just the passion that he has for trying basketball and 
what he calls his family here. It's been inspiring to me to watch, and I, I'm sure for you it's been fun. Even though we're disappointed he couldn't play, he's had a big impact nonetheless, hasn't he? Well, significant, and you're not there every day at practice to see right. what he does at practice. Um, he's our official every day, uh, which really <laughs> helps because they have a lot of respect for him as a friend, so they don't really, they may get into him afterwards uh, back at the house, but he does a lot of things there, and he's always pulling guys off to the sides, things that he sees that we recognize, uh, giving them another voice. Um, he, is, he is a coach for us. He's an assistant coach, and he's done a tremendous job of embracing that role, and I think it says a lot about our team and his teammates and how much they respect his thoughts and what he is seeing when it's when uh, when he does talk to them after they come out of a play in practice or even when they come out of the game um, he's always right there to, to let them know what he recognizes and how they could help produce better in the games which is really a big bonus yeah. so top to bottom this unit uh, you know the, the chemistry I talked to Griff the other day he, he came over after the game and he got a few minutes in that game and I just asked him you know you don't play every game how do you stay into it and he said these are my brothers and I think as a coach if you can have a group of people that love each other and care about each other it's easier to lead and to, to be the effective coach that you want to be is it just the combination of guys that you have is it something that you bring in terms of that continuity and, and brotherhood how, how do you account for the fact that these guys just genuinely love playing with each other well, I, I think um, it has a lot to do with their parents sure. um, I, more than anything else. I think we're very fortunate to be around a, a group of young men that have had a great foundation of mm -hmm. how to treat other people, uh, how to respect others and their strengths. And the one thing I think we may foster in, in that locker room more than anything else as a staff is we pretty confident everybody in there knows what they bring to the table and how important we think it is. We don't have anybody involved in our program that isn't some type of vital part of the success, whether that's a manager, uh, a guy that plays two minutes a game to a guy that plays 32 minutes a game. Everybody a part of our program, we couldn't accomplish the things that we've been able to accomplish the last four years with this group without their contribution. So um, everybody in the locker room understands how important Griff is and Griff knows how important he has been. Um, and a lot of people don't like to accept maybe what your role would be, not being able to play that much, but or not getting a whole lot of shots. You know, it can always be something. Everybody can find something sure. that they want more of. You know, as coaches, we want more wins. You know, we want more stops. We want more, uh, you know, trips to the free throw line. There's always more. You always want something more. But you got to really understand what you do well. And I think the identity of our program and our team is embrace our strengths and try to avoid our weaknesses. And the strength of our team is our people. And it is a people business. It's still a game. Uh, it is a classroom. Um, and we're going to get a grade here eventually, whether it's at the end of this week, the end of next week, or three weeks down the road in Fort Wayne. Um, we're going to get a grade on what we accomplished this year. And I think more importantly than anything else, it's just understanding what you can do together and the strength of a team to make sure we all achieve what we're trying to get to. Coach, you guys put up on social media this weekend, it's win or go home time. And these emojis saying you were up for that challenge. Like, tournament basketball is like nothing else. It's so exciting. Obviously, there's that finality to it with what happens with the results. Uh, but this is the time that has got to be exciting to coach. I know developing all year long leading up to this is important, but it's go time, right? Yeah, we're getting everybody's best shot, yeah. and we better be ready to deal out ours. Um, Adrian's coming in here tomorrow night to play in the quarterfinals, and they're going to give us their mm -hmm. best effort of the year, uh, especially after losing on, on, to us on Saturday. So we know that coming in, that we're going to get their best effort. Uh, they're going to be extremely prepared, and we have to play well. We're not going to be able to get out of a tournament game, regardless of who you play or where you play it at, without playing your best. Everybody is capable of winning games. I think uh, uh, you know Virginia dealt with that a few years yeah. ago, the year before they yeah. won the national championship. But it can happen, so you have to prepare. Um, your alertness level has to be at a very high level uh, in practice, and then you have to come to the game on Saturday knowing what you can do to contribute to the win. We're going to pack MTI. We want a loud, hostile environment for the road teams. Uh, especially tomorrow night. All the best to you, Coach. Thank you, and, and that's, that's a fantastic point. We have been so thankful for the support of the students, the staff, the community all year long. We've had a great environment here at the MTI Center. We need to continue it again on Tuesday.